gardeners so I am here with Vendetta and you guys probably haven't seen him for a very long time so he is definitely way bigger than the last time that you guys saw him it seems like he literally had a growth spurt just overnight and I just checked on him one day and he decided to just be huge and he's so strong and he's just getting more and more gorgeous every single day so I'm just so excited about Vendetta he's just the best so to honor Vendetta, we are going to be talking all about boas and pythons today. So today I'm going to be going over the similarities and the differences between boas and pythons. And then I'm just going to go over the different types of boas and pythons because there are just so many different kinds. They come in so many different types of sizes and colors and patterns, defense mechanisms just geographics like everything there's so many different types of boas and pythons and they get confused all of the time so i'm hoping that there will be a better understanding at the end of this video about the different types of boas and pythons and what separates the two groups so i'm going to kick off this entire thing by talking about the similarities between pythons and boas so one of the similarities is that boas and pythons are among some of the largest snakes in the world when it comes to their anatomy, they are both regarded as relatively primitive. Their skulls are heavier and their jaws are more rigid than those of more advanced snakes like the colubrids, elapids, or vipers. Both pythons and boas have retained the anatomical features from limbed animals, which include a back limb or a pelvic girdle, and in most species the remains of back limbs in the form of small claws or spurs. The spurs are used by the male to stimulate and position the females during mating. And this is something that I didn't know until recently. So I was trying to sex Bowie not too long ago, who is a boa, and I was trying to look for those little spurs. Um, they're very common in boa constrictors, but apparently they also are in pythons as well. They aren't as common though, and they can be kind of difficult to find, but that is just the way in order to be able to sex your snake other than popping or probing them. Another similarity between boas and pythons is that they are both constrictors. So whenever they're hunting for their food, they're going to actually reach out, grab their meal, and they're going to constrict it until they basically suffocate that animal and then they consume it whole. Another similarity between boas and pythons is that they're both nocturnal. And if you look at their eyes, most snakes in general are nocturnal and they have that little um, pupil that's a slit down the center that's vertical. That usually means that the animal is nocturnal and that they use that for seeing at nighttime because that's when they come out to hunt. Other than that, they're just gonna be sleeping during the day. There are a few species that actually do come out and bask and get some warmth during the day, but for the most part, they're nocturnal and they're gonna be doing most of their hunting at nighttime. Another similarity between boas and pythons and basically just all snakes in general is tongue flicking. So you can actually see Vendetta right now who is flicking his little tongue out and he's tasting the air around him. He's doing this to detect scent molecules in the air with his Jacobson's organ. So it's really interesting and that is how he can basically sense everything around him. And sometimes I just try to imagine what that would be like to be a snake and literally just stick your tongue out and be able to taste the air and figure out your surroundings through your tongue. Really, really cool though. Another similarity between boas and pythons are their very smooth scales. So some snakes do have keeled scales and both the pythons and the boas are very smooth to the touch. And honestly, that's one of the things that I prefer most about them. I've held a keeled scaled snake before and it honestly kind of hurt. I didn't really enjoy it and they just feel so smooth and a lot of people think that boas and pythons because they are so smooth it kind of looks like they're moist or wet that's why a lot of people think that snakes in general are wet when in fact they aren't they're just very smooth because of the way that their scales are the jaws of boas and pythons are designed to swallow objects up to five times their diameter the teeth are curved so that by first moving one side and then the other the food is pushed down the throat so if you are ever bitten by a boa or a python, their teeth are actually curved so that way it faces backward because they're using those teeth to basically walk over their food in order to bring it down into their throat. So if you are ever bitten by a boa or a python and their teeth are latched into you, the worst thing to do would be to pull away from the snake because you're literally just going to tear your skin because their teeth are facing backwards. 
So the best thing to do if you have teeth lodged in you from a boa or a python would be actually to move the other way just to be able to unlatch those teeth and get your hand out of its mouth. Most of you guys probably already know this similarity, but boas and pythons are non-venomous. So if you are bitten by a boa or a python, your life is not in jeopardy whatsoever. You're gonna be completely fine. It may hurt a little bit, but you will survive and there's no venom in that bite. So those are all of the similarities between the two groups of boas and pythons. And now I'm gonna move into the differences and how you can really tell these guys apart and what separates the two. So the main difference between boas and pythons and what separates the two groups is how they reproduce. Boas, with the possible exception of one species, bear live young, which is also called viviparous. This means that the young develops inside the body of the snake and they give birth to live young. Pythons, however, are oviparous, meaning that they lay eggs. So rather than the babies developing within the snake's body and then giving live birth like the boas, the pythons will actually lay the eggs and then the eggs will incubate and then when it's time to hatch, the babies will be born from the eggs. Another difference between some boas and pythons is actually the fact that there is a little bit of parenting involved. So boas, because they do give birth to live young, they don't really have any concern about protecting their eggs because obviously the eggs are inside their own body and so the eggs are protected. However, with pythons, they lay their eggs and their eggs are kind of more vulnerable. So pythons are known to actually parent a little bit and they protect those eggs and try to keep them warm as well. And that's extremely interesting because reptiles are known to not be able to produce their own body heat. However, the females are known to be able to regulate the temperature of their eggs by producing metabolic heat. What some of them actually do is shiver their body and that can actually produce a little bit of warmth for their eggs. Other pythons will actually come out during the day and bask in the sunlight in order to get that warmth and heat up their bodies and then they go back to their nest and lay on top of their eggs and keep them nice and warm that way. So pythons can be pretty good moms. I mean, they're taking care of their eggs, they're making sure they're safe and warm and that's pretty cool. So the next difference between boas and pythons actually has to do with where they come from. Pythons are found in Africa, Asia, and Australasia. Boas occur mainly in the Americas with a smaller number of species in Africa, Asia, and some in the Pacific Islands. And the last one is not basically a black and white situation, but um, pythons are more commonly seen with the heat pits, which surround their mouth, and that is a way to detect food based on temperature. So they can see a rodent and they can see its warmth, and they use those heat pits in order to sense that in order to get their prey. You can see the heat pits more likely with pythons rather than boas. With a boa constrictor, just like Vendetta here, he does not have heat pits. So what he's doing is basically just using that Jacobson's organ and using the tongue in order to taste his surroundings and that's how he would hunt. However, my green tree python or my ball python, they both have very visible heat pits that they use in order to hunt their food. So that is along the mouth. There are some boas, again, it's not a black and white situation. Some boas can have the heat pits um, and not all pythons have them either. So it's just like one of those things where it's not like a definite difference, but it is one way to be able to generally tell them apart. So for the last portion, I'm just gonna talk about different types of boas and pythons that are very similar, that I see people mixing up all the time just based on their size. So the largest boas are actually the anaconda, which is the largest snake of all, and they can reach over 29 feet and weigh more than 550 pounds. Following behind that boa constrictors, just like Vendetta here, they usually are six to eight feet. They can get larger than that, especially the females. There are definitely known to be like 10 foot females out there but generally it's six to eight feet, so they are very heavy-bodied boas. The heavy-bodied pythons include the Burmese python, which can reach 23 feet or more, the Indian python, which can reach seven to 10 feet, reticulated pythons, 10 to 20 feet, African rock pythons can reach nine to 11 feet, and of the pythons, the reticulated pythons are the largest, reaching 10 to 20 feet long. There is a record of a reticulated python actually reaching 32 feet, and it was 350 pounds. So very, very big snake. They're definitely the runner up after the anaconda, which is a boa. 
The smaller to medium types of boas and pythons, I'm going to start with the boas. Rosy boas are usually 24 to 36 inches. They are just really, really small boas. Sand boas um, can usually reach around two feet. The males are even smaller than that. Rainbow boas are more of a medium snake. They do get five to six feet, just like my Brazilian rainbow boa bowie. And then some of the small to medium pythons include ball pythons, which are usually three to five feet. Again, they can get a little bit larger than that. I'm just going off of generally how big they are. There's always exceptions and there's always gonna be snakes that break the record. Black-headed pythons are a medium snake that are usually six to eight feet long. Another group that I want to cover are the different arboreal pythons and boas. So these I feel like get confused all of the time and people just really, I mean, they look very similar and I can see how people will mix them up. So hopefully this video will help be able to tell them apart a little better. So of the arboreal boas, um, there are Amazon tree boas, which are usually five to six feet long. They are very, very skinny and have very large eyes. They come in many different colors. I feel like those many different colors is a way that separates them from a lot of other snakes, so you can tell them apart. And the emerald tree boa, which is five to six feet long. They have very, very large heads though, very large teeth, and they get mixed up all of the time with the green tree pythons. So emerald tree boas are boas, and green tree pythons are pythons. They look very, very similar just because they're green and they're arboreal and they both live up in the trees, but they're very different. The green tree python is usually a little bit smaller than the emerald tree boas and they're usually four to six feet long. They have smaller heads and they just have a different look. The emerald tree boas have these white bands that go along their back, whereas the green tree pythons don't have those white bands. They can have some like yellow or blue speckling on them, but the definite white bands are how you can tell an emerald tree boa apart from a green tree python. Another arboreal python are actually the carpet pythons. Carpet pythons can usually reach five to six feet and they're very, very gorgeous animals, very stunning. They're usually bright yellow and they have black bands and they're just really, really cool snakes. And of all of the arboreal boas and pythons, they're all known to be nippy and have attitudes. And it's just because they're locked and loaded in position for hunting and defending themselves on trees. So that's pretty much everything when it comes to boas and pythons. So I hope that this gave you guys a better understanding of the two and how they're similar and how they're different. Um, they're each very very interesting animals and I absolutely love both of them I have two pythons and I have two boas I love them more than anything they're just so cool I may slightly love boas a little bit more than pythons but that's just me um, but yeah so I hope that this video was helpful and you can understand some similarities and differences and why these two are in separate groups entirely and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one